to create a Pages with Catherine. I'm Catherine. It's time for Sketch With Me using the R Moments Collection. I've picked a sketch from our January 2021 virtual crops. It's on our blog. I will put a link in the description box below. This was sketch number five from our January 2021 virtual crops. And I just thought it really would go well with this collection. We have so many colorful papers and we have a lot of circles that we're gonna be adding to our pages and a little bit of a border. So I think that this is just the perfect sketch to use for this collection. I picked several of our pages, both from our designer paper pack and our tone on tone paper pack for this two page spread. I am going to be using the postcard looking paper, which has some like gray ferns on the back of it for the base of both sides of this layout. I have this blue diamond paper with the blue stripes on the back that's going to be kind of bordering on the top and the bottom of our page. We're going to make some mats out of this really colorful stamp paper that has the blue ferns on the back. And we are going to be cutting circles from several of our different colored pages here. I picked out these four. I've got a couple of yellows and a couple of pinks because I think they complement each other and the mat and border nicely. These are the back sides of the pages I picked. So let's give it a go. We're going to start out by cutting some strips for the top and bottom of our page. So go ahead and pull out your 12 inch trimmer. And we also will be using our circle, our medium circle from our custom cutting system with the blue blade. You can use your circle cutter as well, but I did not get the measurements for that. It's something that can be done pretty easily if you use the uh, number grid from your custom cutting system to adapt it for the circle cutter. We're gonna start by cutting two one inch strips from our paper and I want the design to run vertically across my paper with the, the long ways going across. So I'm turning my sheet and we need four one inch strips. So one inch by 12 inches four times here. And you can use either the right side or the left side of your trimmer to cut this. Maybe it's a little easier to have this length of paper on the left because you can hold it with your left hand as you cut with the right. And we are going to be creating some scraps from this and I will do a card out of these scraps but I also have another special project in mind that I am actually going to do my video for this project first and then I will do the card so my scraps may not look like your scraps but I will be good about telling you which lengths and dimensions I'm using on my card when I get to that point and maybe you'll want to do my other project as well. So keep an eye on my channel and my videos and I think it's going to be fun. I am enjoying getting outside of just the scrapbooking and cards and doing some paper crafting as well. I hope you all are enjoying those videos too. Next we're going to get the stamp page and we are going to cut some mats. I have
three four and a quarter by five and a quarter mats mapped out and one four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this at four and a quarter. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut my six and a quarter inch mat. And that leaves us with enough to do one of our five and a quarter inch mats. This strip looks like it's gonna be a good one for our cards because I know my other project can't use something that small. We're gonna do a second four and a quarter by 12 inch strip here. And we're gonna turn it 90 degrees and cut two five and a quarter inch strips. So two five and a quarter by four and a quarter. That's it for our 12 inch trimmer for right now. We do have a journal box that we may be cutting a small piece from one of our scraps later to create a journal box out of, but we're not that far along yet for me to know what we're doing. Well, I've misplaced my sticky grip mat, but I have a second pad I'm putting under just to give me some extra leverage with my cutting mat and so hopefully it won't twist too much as I cut these circles for you. I have my blue blade. This is one of the ones that do does rotate, which are just so nice and handy. We need 22 circles, so I'm going to cut six circles from two of the sheets and five circles from two of the sheets. And some of these we may use both sides of the paper and some we might just go with the single side that we have up here. Remember when you're cutting that your red, red blade cuts closest to the track and the blue blade is the furthest in. So you don't have to get your, um, your circle quite so far over. You can actually almost see the edge of your circle as you're cutting just to help save a little extra paper as well. So here I'm getting five across. I probably could have moved mine down a little. One, two, three, four, five. I need one more. And I probably could have gotten that sixth one across if I had positioned my circle at the beginning a little bit better, but that's okay. You do know I don't mind working with scraps. So here's the first six circles. I'm gonna go ahead and set those on my pile. And I'm gonna go ahead and do six out of this one as well. Let's see if I can position this a little bit better so I can actually get more. So I, I'm i just moving the whole thing with the, the blade in the track just to make my life a little bit easier as well here. Let's get towards the edge. There's my first circle. I'm going to actually go down a little bit more and overlap this just a little. So here's number two, and then that did stay on the paper, so I can see that I'm lined up nicely at the bottom, and I can even go a little bit more over. There we are. Four. I don't think I'm gonna get six on here. That's five. Yep, that's okay. So I did all right the first time. Sometimes it's nice to know. So there's our six from this sheet. And I do need to get out my scissors here. I'm just gonna use my regular scissors this time. Y'all know how much I love my 
micro tip scissors, but our other scissors come in handy also. They, they still cut. They do a great job. And I just have a little bit that I wasn't pressing hard enough with the blade, which happens from time to time. Happens to me with the trimmer from time to time as well. I just don't want to press too hard, I guess. Now we're ready to cut five. Oops, I got a little too close to the edge of the paper there, so I need to bring this back down and come back the opposite direction without moving my circle if I can help it here. I'm trying not to, oh, my blade slipped, so I've torn my paper. Okay, well, we'll leave that one and we'll just do five more, and that's okay. And I'm still not in there, am I? Okay, let's fix this. Pull the snippet of paper off of there. I'm gonna go ahead and put my blade back in. I'm gonna turn my paper just to make my life easier here. And here we go. Let's let's go ahead and start cutting five circles. go worked out much better for me on this end so set that aside final sheet we're gonna cut five more circles Okay, there we go. Our last five circles are cut. And we also need to cut some borders as well. Go ahead and set aside your 13 by 13 cutting mat. We're done with our circles. Put away your blade and bring out your border maker system. We are gonna be using the Circle Chain Border Maker cartridge. I just think it's gonna be fun with all the circles we have on the bottom of the page, just to add an accent with more circles on it. If you want, you can use the new Flourish Vine border maker cartridge. We actually did uh, in the project recipe for our memories, you can actually take some of this paper that we're gonna to use to border our page with and punch from the other side, add a score mark, fold it over and have a beautiful border that way as well. But the Flourish Vine is one that stays with the paper and the circle chain comes away from it. You can see when you look at the boxes what gets punched and you can see where this one stays with the paper and this one pulls away. So, which paper are we going to punch? <laughs> we are going to punch this one that we took our circles out of. It's the yellow mustardy paper. And I am going to attempt to do this right-handed for you all. I am a bit ambidextrous and sometimes do this left-handed and I hope it doesn't confuse people. So our border maker, there's a, a bottom tray that pulls out from underneath to help line up your paper. You fold it back under, and then you line up the notches on your punch and on your paper holder to punch 
your pieces. And I'm gonna go ahead and punch all four. I finished punching off four of the borders that I'm gonna need for this two page layout. I'm gonna set aside my border maker system. I'm grabbing my baggie just in case I wind up using some of these in our scrap card. Let me take out these thin strips which you all know I have used before in our scrap cards. So I'm gonna set those up with our other smaller pieces. And I'm gonna go ahead and put these into a baggie as well. Oops. We got a few circles that wanted to stay behind, but they're gonna get put in the bag. Go ahead and pull back out your 13 by 13 cutting mat and place the left side of your layout onto it so that way you can gauge your measurement of where we need to place our circles. So we have our one inch strips, but our circles are going to be going underneath these. So we kind of want to place them above. Actually, we can use two of our one inch strips to help with our placement because we want to put them right about the two inch mark. For our back row, which is going to have five circles staggered a bit. So I'm going to start with in the center here and let's see, so we have let's see, this one has two kinds of pink. So we have this light pink and we have a dark pink. I think actually we're gonna put the light pink on the outsides and we'll put some dark pink on the insides this time. And then on our next row, We'll mix it up a little bit more with some more of the yellows and the mustards because we have quite a bit of that as well and we need to remember for our right side of our page as well. So I think our right side is gonna have a few more yellows centered by the pink and then we'll go reverse. So let me grab my tape runner and we're going to go ahead and start placing these down. You can use your repositionable tape if you like. However, I feel like we've got a pretty good spacing here. You can see there's about a half inch or so in between each one of these and like a quarter of an inch on the edge here. And I've managed to knock my little holder here. There we go. Or my placeholder, I guess I should say. I'm going to go ahead and grab both of these so that I can get them placed reasonably evenly. Yes, I tend to eyeball things a lot. If you don't want to do that, you're more than welcome to grab out your zero centering ruler or however you wish to do this. I'm going to grab the right side of my page and go ahead and place it down on top of my left side because I just want to go ahead and place my back row of circles on this one as well. And then that way we can see what we have left for our other, our six row of six going across the front of it. So we're gonna center our mustards with our pink this time. And which one do we have more of? The 
this one. So here we go, coming in a little bit because I need to leave a little space at the edge as well because that's how I did it on the other side. There we go. Let me go ahead and stick these down. So now we're ready to put our next row in and we need six. So let's see here. One, two, three, four. So we have two pinks for the other side. And um, maybe we cut too many. Nope, I used one too many of the other side. So two, four, six. Hmm. Huh. Okay, well I have an extra circle. That's never mind. It doesn't really matter all that much. I'm gonna go ahead and put my circles from the outside here to Four and okay let's go ahead and maybe the way I lined it up the first time I should have staggered it a little bit more in order to fit my six in here nicely or we can also mix these up a little bit more too I almost feel like I need to move this and no, we don't want that together. All right, so that looks pretty good. And we're gonna kind of line these up with our one inch mark here. So we're gonna go probably try to place these two over kind of in between the center one and then go out from there. So these two are gonna be a little bit close, but not too close. Maybe about an eighth of an inch distance in between here. But you know what, if we go off the end of the paper, it really doesn't matter, it's paper. We grab our scissors and we snip a little and it's fixed. This. to our right side of our page or our left side whichever doesn't really matter because these are essentially mirror images at this point we're going to go ahead and pull out our pinks and our Mustard color. Actually, we're going to switch those so that way that one's not on the center. I'm going to do this and put this one here. Maybe I'll put that one there. And this one over here, that way it's a little bit random. And we do have one extra circle. I don't know how I miscounted that. Well, when 
I was cutting, I must have cut it six off of three pages instead of just two of them, which is what it is. And we can use the circle later in another card or who knows where I'll find a place for it. But I will find a place for it. Okay. All right, so that is our circles. We are going to play around now with the left side of our page here. I am going to place my strip up a little and then we have put, we'll put our second strip up at the top. I'm leaving a little bit of the white space at the top just initially. And this border I want to run kind of halfway through there and then on the top also because we need it to pop a little I may actually line that one up a little bit more on the other side here let's grab our mats so we have our six and a quarter by four and a quarter mat that's going to go down this way and one of our four and a quarter by five and a quarter mats can go over some of the circles a little bit there's space for a title up here and some stickers over here and I am actually going to Maybe I'm going to reverse this a little bit. On the sketch, they have it where the punched border is presented lower than the solid one, but I think I'm going to actually layer it opposite. So this is about a half an inch up on our mat with our one inch piece here, and I'm going to go ahead and put that down using my half inch marks on my 13 by 13 cutting mat to help me with the placement so I get it straight. And then I'm gonna place this just a little bit below it. I'm gonna grab my parchment mat and my repositionable tape. And here we go. And then this one's going to go across the bottom here where you're going to see the blue part kind of cutting through the middle of these other circles. So there we have our circles below, our circles above. I think it looks really kind of cool. It's sort of geometric here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my other one inch strip. I'm going to set it a half inch down from the top of the page, again using my mat to help with the placement of the strip so it goes on nice and neat. And we're going to go ahead and lay our circle punched piece with it showing half and half. And I'm over just a little bit, so I need to scoot that just a hair. Oops, here we go. And there we go. All right. 
Next we can place our mats. We've got this one going up here. Following the line of our other papers. And this one we're gonna have a picture going up the side here. I'm gonna put this over just a hair. Just love all the colors. It's beautiful. And now I'm gonna grab the right side of my page and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna pull out actually this left side. And we're gonna go ahead and get our borders placed and our mats. We have these two to place as well. Um, like I said, there you could use the opposite side if you want, but I just, I love the color. We're gonna go ahead and place our strips at the half inch mark again and put our borders in as well. Here we go. So I know where my half inch mark is again. Okay. Work with me here. Here we go. All right, so we're at the half inch mark, getting this lined up nicely. There we go. All right, next come our circle chain pieces that we punched. through the top here again and at the bottom there we go and using my repositionable tape are on and now we'll put our other mats and on the sketch they have these layered a bit with this one over the top of the other one and when you see me do other sketches and project recipes I just won't put tape in this end so that way I can add my pictures nicely and not have to worry about trying to lift things up later in this corner so I don't tape there. But everywhere else. And so you can get your, I can get my picture put in nicely as well. Okay. So here we are. Okay, here we are with our sketch. Pretty much done. We, we still need to add a few stickers, but um, we're in pretty good shape here. You can see where this piece is usually a journal box and you can put the sticker below that. I'm gonna wait to add that, or you can even almost journal directly on this paper because it's lighter. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do once I get the pictures yet, so I'm gonna wait on that. But I will probably add a sticker probably up in this part here and one in this lower end since this is what we have on our sketch. Okay, from our, from our sticker sheet, I am going to pull this one that says Memories and I'm gonna put a couple of our small foam squares underneath it 
help it stand out a little bit more on our page. Since our page does have so much going on this time. So Memories is going up here, and we want it to stand out enough, so I'm going to put it so it's close to this blue. And then I really like, on the left side of the page here, this Portraits of the Past has kind of a stamped look. And we also have two other stamp looking ones. One that's this beautiful, one that says Happy Days. And those are going to go down here and create their own little sticker cluster. So again, I'm going to grab a couple of our small foam squares to put on the back of this one. Okay, I'm trying to get the backs off here. I am going to put this one here but I kind of want the other two to be popping out from under it, so I'm gonna, hang on, turn this over. We've got our, oops, our happy days and our beautiful that I'm going to see where I need to place these so they pop out nicely so you can see them. So I think actually the B1 looks great here because it kind of repeats our mustard colors that we have down here and our happy days is going to go up over here because it pulls in from the top with the gray and then here's our portraits of the past with our foam squares under it ready to go down next to those two there we go all done I hope you all enjoyed this sketch and I will be doing a card from these scraps as well but stay tuned for my other videos as well because the scraps like I said might look different we do have these for sure I know I will be using in our card I'm just not sure what else yet put together our scrap card from our our moments sketch so we just completed this sketch and this is what our double page layout looks like and we had quite a few scraps we did have these little strips that I have used before for grass and things. We are actually not going to use this on the card today. We are going to be using some of our stickers, including one of the border stickers. We're actually not going to be using these either today. And we did have a whole bunch of scraps from where we cut our circles and our upper and lower border. So I've taken a couple of extras. I took one more circle from this paper. I had already had cut an extra circle from this one somehow that didn't get used in the layout. And I had this one where it got caught, my blade got caught and ripped the paper a little bit, but I was able to trim out the circle with my scissors. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this circle from this page as well. I've also, let me show you kind of where we're going here. I've grabbed one of my blank card kits cards and okay, we had a, this paper was just a strip. And so what I did was I lined up, I noticed that I had this other extra little strip and I saw where I had both the brown and the 
mustard color actually matched up on my strip here. And so I've lined them up and I kind of fussy cut so it would line up on my card. And it's gonna be kind of the top end of our card here. And we've got our three circles that we're gonna be using. So this card is actually gonna mimic our page. I don't very often with the scrap cards mimic the pages I do in some of my crops. But this time it just seemed to make sense. So we had the paper that we had bordered our top and bottom of our page with. And so I cut it the four and a quarter by five and a half to fit our card. And if you want, you can do it this way and you can run your stripes the opposite way, just to however works for you. If you decide to make this card, you can even use this other side of the page. But I decided since this collection is so bright and colorful, why not make the card bright and colorful and embrace the patterns that are here? We're gonna run this strip down the left side of our card and it's always good to double check because I can't tell you how many times I've run things the wrong way. And since we fussy cut this, I'm gonna make sure I have my correct side at the top of my card here, just lining things up. We're gonna run this other one. And when I did my tape, I did leave this end a little bit loose so I could get my circles under. You know, it, it just bear that in mind when you're putting your tape on. Otherwise, grab your multi-purpose tool and make use of that. Okay, here we go. Making sure I get this going the correct direction for, like I said, since I bothered to fussy cut it. By gum, I'm gonna make sure I get it going the right direction that I want it to go. And these circles, I'm gonna make sure to put, oh, did I just flip that one? I think I put the, ah, daggum. Well, that's okay. We're gonna, I put the tape on the wrong side. I was gonna have this side up with this pink, but you know what, it'll still work with the two pinks and the slider side as well. It just isn't gonna be exactly what I had originally planned, but that's, you know, why we have double-sided paper is you can use both sides. So this is gonna sneak underneath. And this one now is gonna go over here. Oops, let me grab my multi-purpose tool anyways because I need to get in this corner here and lift up both papers. See if it's going the side, I need it going down here. Roll my circle in so they're kind of lined up the way we had them on the other page. And now here comes in our third circle. And if you remember, here was our page. Remember we tucked these under and then we kind of, so I'm doing it a little bit reverse. And the, the page here we have this row is on top and here I put this other one on top. Honestly, you could easily lift these up and put it under. There you go. So now it mimics the page a little more. Either way, I think it looks good. However you want to do yours. If you decide to do this card, as I always say, go for it. I also had this extra little strip and I really thought that this looked nice towards the top of the card here. Just get, again, mimicking our page that we did. And so I'm gonna grab the parchment board out and do this real quick on here because Lord knows it's hard to tape in a straight line sometimes. And the repositionable tape just makes life so easy for that. Okay, so that one's going across. So this is a few more layers of paper than what I typically do, but I just thought, like I said, we're going kind of bright and colorful. Why not use that strip as well? I have a sticker picked out, this You Make Life Wonderful, because it has the pinks as well, and I think it would be just beautiful in this middle part here, or you can center it on the 
single circle, but I'm going to put it over the middle there. And of course, I'm going to grab one of my large foam squares, pop it up a bit. I think this would be a great thinking of you card. I'm trying to get this in the center of the sticker. So really now you don't even know if you're, well, I guess you can still see where the circles are overlapping each other. And finally, I am going to use this magenta sticker, this border sticker, to line our card as well. And I, just because remember on our page, we also had that kind of double layer of the border maker. And yes, we could use some of our scraps to punch another circle chain if you want. But we also have these fabulous border stickers. Why not make use of them? I'm grabbing my micro tip scissors because these can cut stickers all day. As you know, I love them. They have a special coating. They don't get gooped up. And let's see, do we want this one with the, I'm gonna put the little ribbon end going up on this one. Let's see here. Do we want to scoot this over? Do we want to put this over here? Do we want to cover up the, yes. We're going to cover up kind of this edgy end here, which I know I tried to match up with the other, but I like how it looks here. So this is where I'm going to place it. You place yours where you want if you decide to use it and do this. There we go. This is going back on the sticker sheet to use for another project because you know I'll probably wind up finding a use for it. But there we go. Well, there is our scrap card. I do have another video that I have used the R Moments paper for and I have I think a page and a card planned for that as well because I had quite a few scraps and I used some of these scraps from this video in that video as well. So take a look and see where else have you been using up my scraps. But I hope you enjoyed this scrap with me time. I had a lot of fun doing our sketch. based on the January 2021 virtual crop sketch here. And I just think our, our card turned out beautiful. Our pages turned out wonderful. And I hope this has given you some ideas for your scrapping and card making. Until next time.